This video is about calibrating an alpha particle detector, particularly the alpha particle detector that is used in our end station for Rutherford backscattering measurements, the Hope Ion Beam Accelerator Laboratory. The detector is currently inside the end station under vacuum. Being in situ, I can't show it to you right now, but it looks like one of these, these Ortec Ultra Charged Particle Silicon Diode Detectors. I do believe we're using an unmetallized detector, boron doped and arsenic doped. Charged particles arrive at the PN junction and the, in the surface layer, very close to the surface because that's as far as they penetrate, is where they are finally stopped. A radioactive source containing several alpha emitting nuclei is used to do this calibration and a calibration certificate is available which documents each emission from each type of nuclei inside the source. We will make use of that in our calibration where there are a total of eight different emission lines that we might see. Here's the spectrum that results from the calibration procedure. A two column data file is provided. Column one is the channel number, column two is the number of counts, and as you scroll through you'll find different peaks. First the gadolinium peak right there, and then you'll find the plutonium peak will be next, and then you'll have the americium peak, and then finally the curium peak. You can find them all in the data file. Now put the two column ASCII formatted data into a graphing software. You could use Excel, although I don't recommend it because you do want to locate the peaks precisely. I'm going to use Origin. So I open up a worksheet in Origin and I'll bring in my ASCII file. And that's the data we were just looking at. I'll do a quick graph. I like to narrow in my view. And we have our four peaks. The graph is of count number versus channel number, and we have to get the centroid for each of these peaks. Some of them are singlets, like gadolinium, the first one, and some are doublets, like americium and curium, and there's one triplet, plutonium. We're not actually going to be able to resolve all three of them in plutonium. So to find the centroids, zoom in on each one of these. So I'll zoom in on gadolinium. I can tell that the centroid is somewhere around 497. I want to know exactly. So go to peaks and baseline. Multiple. I use multiple peak fitting even though there's only one peak because it allows me to select a guess. My guess is that the center there. Double click and click fit. The gadolinium peak is at channel 498.0227. Minimize that. But to do the next one, plutonium, just do another graph. Zero in on the plutonium peak. And like I say, you can't really see the third peak. And again, peaks and baseline, multiple peak fit, open. And now click on the two places where you expect there to be the peak. And you'll notice you don't have to click on a point. And we have the centroid for plutonium, 791 and 798 with decimal points. Americium. And there it's almost as if there is a third peak, but it could be noise. We're not going to try to fit to it. 843 and 849 with decimal points. And finally, we need to do curium. Well-defined doublet there. Keep in mind, these are just guesses for the centroids. So now we have fit the peaks and we can put all of these into a spreadsheet where we have the independent variable is the channel number, the dependent variable is the energy from our calibration certification. We'll put in the channels for each of these. The gadolinium peak was at channel 498.0227. The americium peaks are at 843.4258. 849.6. And finally, the curium peaks. Graph this and do a straight line fit. One thing you might notice I did not do here is I did not add a column for uncertainties. Those uncertainties are available 
looking at the fits, you have the center with the plus or minus. So you could add another column for the uncertainty on the channel. However, we're going to do a fit of energy versus channel. And it turns out that at least this software origin for, does not weight the independent variables uncertainties in the fitting. And so it wouldn't make a difference. So I didn't include the uncertainties in the channel, which would give us horizontal error bars. And we have a slope of 6.55 and an intercept of minus 76.69. So that's our alpha calibration. In SimNRA, you put those numbers in right here. Calibration offset was minus 76.6978. Way more significant figures than should be allowed. And the slope is 6.55443. And you need the significant figures on that slope. It will really mess you up if you don't have at least four. So that's the calibration. The next question is what was the energy? And if you don't have a direct measure of it, you can use the location of your peaks to find it. For example, what we expect for their gold looks something like this, except that I don't know what the energy is. So let's import our data. And clearly it's way off. A few things need to be adjusted. <laughs> the particle steradian gets it down somewhere where we're supposed to be. And our gold peak is out here someplace. So our energy is way off. Normally we're around 3,000 kilo electron volt. Because the simulated peak is a little bit higher, I'm going to reduce the energy a little bit more. And I might use this energy value as free fit parameter if I don't know exactly what it is. Okay, so that's the calibration of the alpha detector that we use in the Rutherford backscattering experiments in the Hope College IM Beam Accelerator Laboratory.